Hi everyone. Today I'd like to take you on a tour of the National Museum of Funeral History in Spring, Texas. I'd heard about this museum for years, but I didn't actually visit it until a few weeks ago. I really had no idea what to expect. A museum dedicated to the history of funerals sounds like it could be morbid or gory, but it wasn't. I had a fascinating experience walking through this museum and I want to show you clips from a few of my favorite exhibits. A large area of the museum was dedicated to presidential funerals, since they're some of the largest and most impressive in the country. And the death of a president can be a time of mourning for all of us, especially if the president dies in tragic circumstances like illness or assassination. The museum had a lot of artifacts from President Lincoln's funeral. I think his death really came as a shock to the whole country, which hadn't yet recovered from the Civil War. And Americans mourned the president in genuine Victorian tradition. This is a fragment of Lincoln's hair. It was a genuinely moving experience to stand next to a little part of one of our country's greatest presidents. I'd heard about the Lincoln train on a podcast called American Shadows. There was an entire episode devoted to Lincoln's death, funeral, and the long journey his body had before finally reaching his resting place. The train stopped in a lot of places along the way, and the casket was displayed in city halls so that local people could mourn the president and pay their last respects. The museum also had artifacts from the funeral industry over the decades. I've never really thought about funerals and mourning as their own industry, but all of these things made me realize how much money and work goes into dealing with death. We all think about the wedding industry or industries related to food, fashion, etc. because all of these have to do with life. I think people are reluctant to talk about death like it's in bad taste to bring it up unless it's absolutely necessary. They also had a reconstruction of America's first crematory. I have to say that the body laid out on the gurney and the flickering oven creeped me out a little. One area of the museum was dedicated to international funerals and mourning traditions. I particularly liked this colorful exhibit of a house celebrating Dia de los Muertos. My favorite area was this reconstruction of a Victorian parlor prepared for a funeral. I really enjoy studying the Victorian period and its complex customs, traditions, and the standards of its society. I grew up reading Victorian novels and I love how dramatic they were about love and loss and life and death. I decided to paint one of these Civil War era mourning dresses. I think this dress would originally have had a hoop skirt and petticoats filling it out. Dresses from this era are infamous for just how large their hoops were but I'm going to paint it as it is currently on display. I'm starting with a quick sketch to rough out the size and shape of the dress and the mannequin. I'm going to fill in most of the details with paint, so this is pretty loose. This painting is going to be mostly monochromatic. The main color I'll be using is Payne's Gray, 
which, in spite of its name, is a deep blue-black that turns into a blue-gray when thinned out with water. I rarely use true black when painting with watercolors, or oils, or acrylics, because true black often looks flat and shallow when dry. Because Payne's Gray has just a little bit of blue in it, it gives the illusion of a lustrous black better than true black does. You'll also notice that I'm building up the darks in thin layers. Right now, there's a light gray wash over the entire figure, and I'm going to be gradually building up the shadows darker and darker, and waiting for them to dry in between layers. I'm not using a ton of water, so the drying time isn't very long. I'm also focusing most of my detail and time around her face since that's the area that I want people to look at. This is something I've learned over the years as an artist. Not everything has to be incredibly detailed. I try to spend most of my time and energy around the focal point of the painting, whatever that may be, and let the details get looser as I work my way outwards. This will save you a lot of frustration, especially when you have a limited amount of time to paint. This is all still Payne's Gray, just one color. Monochromatic paintings are a fun challenge if you find a subject that's right for it. Although pretty soon I'm going to go back over her face with a hint of red and some flesh tints, because while I want her to look ghostly and spooky, I do want her to have a little bit of life under her dark veil. I'm also using my white paint pen to indicate the pattern of the beads on her mantle. The beads are very shiny and have bright white highlights where the light strikes them. My dark lady is just about finished. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the National Museum of Funeral History and I highly recommend visiting if you have the chance. Thank you for watching and have a happy Halloween!